This is episode 26, or 46 rather, of the Digital Marketing Masters podcast. I am Yolanda Rose, and every week I bring you easy, actionable tips, content and strategies that you can use to grow your business online almost immediately. Now, I was working with a client recently and we kind of we kind of clashed a lot, mainly because um, we didn't see eye to eye on the strategy. Now, this client hired me to to run her launch for her. However, um, she seemed to do more of the strategizing instead of allowing me to do what I do best. And we clashed a lot. And I found that uh, she was speaking to clients generally, where, whereas my strategy is to speak to clients uh, depending on where they are in the buying cycle for your product. So today on the show, we're going to look at why customers expect different interactions from you, depending on where they are in your buying cycle. I'm also going to cover how specific triggers, well, specific events trigger them into buying mode. And I'm also going to explain how you can use this information to make your marketing more effective. Now, what is the customer buying cycle? So the, it's basically a simple way to look at a buying cycle is to break it up into two, three stages, awareness, consideration, and purchase. Now, awareness is when a customer first becomes aware of your product or could also refer to a point where the customer first becomes aware of a need that they need to fulfill. Consideration is when a customer starts evaluating solutions for their need and purchase, well, you got it, is when they click that buy button and they pull out the credit card and they, they all in and they're sure they're going to buy from you. So imagine that you wandered into a clothing store while walking around the neighborhood and you didn't have a particular idea of anything you wanted to buy. You were approached by a hungry salesman who has, con- who has convinced you that you need to buy something. You are so annoyed by too much attention and feel that they've ruined this peaceful browsing experience that you hope to have. Now imagine that you have gone into the same store. However, in this situation, you have an urgent need to purchase. You want a black jacket and you don't have time to waste. You want a salesperson to help you immediately. You don't want to waste time trying out a red jacket or green jacket. You want a black jacket. You know what you want. You've got the money to buy it. However, you can't seem to get the attention of any of the salespeople. And you're very irritated because there's no attention coming to you. So what's the difference here? The difference between these two examples is where you are in the buying cycle. In the first situation, you are early in the awareness stage. The second example, you are right at the end of your purchase cycle. So at both those points in the buying cycle, the communication needs to be different. Your expectations of how salespeople are in the shop treat treat you are different in both those points of the cycle. So if you are early in the cycle, you want to be largely left alone to browse. You want to get educated. You want to get a feel for the product. If you are later in the cycle, you want to be highly responsive. You need help to be highly highly responsive and to complete the purchase. And using the wrong sales approach leads the buyer to frustration. So this is what happened with, with my client. We had various people come into our, uh, to sign up for a webinar. Uh, a handful of people uh, showed up. However, the client insisted on communicating in a general manner to all of them, whereas I wanted to communicate to the people that attended the webinar differently, the people who signed up for the webinar and didn't stay for the whole thing differently. So I want to speak to to every part of the buying cycle differently, and the client didn't, and we clashed. And needless to say, this client will not be hiring me again. So how do you adapt your marketing to a buyer stage in the cycle. In the online world, we need to provide different parts through websites that are appropriate for each stage. So it turns out that visitors will self-identify where they are in the buying cycle by the parts they take, provided that you give them the option. So in the awareness stage, you want to describe the problem. Get them to agree with you. I have a problem. It's just like an alcoholic. You can't help an alcoholic if he doesn't agree that he has a problem. So you want you want them to sort of self-identify, yeah, there is a problem. You're right, there is a problem. Introduce your solution. 
That's the transition between the awareness and the consideration stage. At the consideration stage, stage, detail information on the solution. Between the consideration and purchase stage, prove the points, customer testimonials, reviews, and all of that. During purchase, just before purchase, maybe offer a free trial. And then the last stage is the actual purchase stage. So what do you do with visitors that are not ready to buy? One, you nurture them. Since visitors who are early in their buying cycle are not likely to buy on their first visit to your website, you need to know how to best handle them in case they do turn into buyers later on. This is the part that I'm so surprised to see often. Uh, it's not given the right level of attention and the results in, in leads leaking from the funnel are just lost marketing investment. I mean, because you're spending money to get people on your page, right? So why are we not chatting up these people and nurturing them up? The key here is to do a great job of staying in touch with them over a period of time and building a trust relationship. This is lead nurturing. Then if you do hit an event that triggers a buying cycle, your product is likely to be top of their shopping list. This allows this to, to allow us to do this, we need their email addresses. Or if you're into chatbot marketing, now we cover this extensively on the podcast, chatbots. Uh, since the website visitors are initially reluctant to provide that, we need to entice them with something of value, like a lead magnet. So once we have their email addresses, we can nurture them through the buying cycle using a customer success story, a blog, a newsletter, a webinar, etc. So at each stage, we got to evaluate, is this client ready to move to the next step? And if they're ready, how are we pushing them up? The buying cycle. Lead nurturing is the is best done with marketing automation software, such as ConvertKit. Now, if you're looking for a 14 day free trial of ConvertKit, um, visit my website, and I'm going to have a link for you right there, or send me a message on Facebook. It's Yolanda Rose again, or on Instagram, it's Yolanda Rose Seven, and I'm going to hook you up with a 14 day free trial with ConvertKit. Now, ConvertKit is marketing automation software, and uh, it's a platform that allows you to segment your customers based on the messages you send them uh, that's really relevant to them and therefore most likely to read. They will allow, uh, the Convert Kit allows you to track those who are advancing in the buying process by observing whether they come back to visit the page, such as a pricing page um, that indicate buy intent. You can then apply more expensive sales resources to those leads, knowing that they are qualified enough to warrant the additional cost. Effective lead nurturing is all about accelerating leads through the consideration process. Customer success stories, product comparisons, all help provide the data and info that a prospect looks at in their own research. If you provide it for them, it makes it easy for them to consume that info and move up and move to the next step in the process. So how do online need leads source relate to customer buy cycle? Firstly, different lead sources produce different buyers at different stages in the customer buy cycle. People that are later in the buying cycle are most likely to be using tools like Google to review sites to search for vendors and products to solve a problem. Those leads are highly valued because they have a high level of buy intent and they're usually in the consideration or purchase stages of the cycle. Many other lead sources such as social, Twitter, Facebook, banner ads, PR stories, educational presentations and conferences, etc. produce buyers that are earlier in the cycle and are frequently just becoming aware that there is a potentially interesting product now available. So market maturity also plays an important role in this stage. For early, for early stage markets, there is still a lot of education required. Most needs need to be very early in the buying cycle. A trigger is an event that causes a buyer to have a clear need. So this is usually converts into a sense of purpose and urgency in their buying process. An example in your very own life, I mean, you might have a vague interest in a new camera. Now, this might have caused you to browse the web, you're reading reviews, you're seeing what the professionals are using, you're checking YouTube, uh, but you have a, a safari trip coming up and uh, this is your trigger. You need to buy before this trip. So you're shopping with a clear intent to purchase at this point. So other examples of triggers are 
your hard disk fa- fails and you realize you need a backup system uh you have a burg- burglary and realize you have a far better a uh, video security system you want a far better a video security system or your company grows beyond a certain size and your old hr uh, systems can no longer cope so so what are the triggers for your product or business or brand what are those triggers that that tell people right i i'm ready for this product now or there's a need for this product now the specific trigger that gets buyers going is not only different from a business to business or brand to brand but it's also different depending on the role of the in the organization and having a clear understanding of what these triggers are will help you to accelerate people through your buying cycle so you'll be able to know um who to target how to improve your messaging to those pros- prospects uh do a better job of qualifying um who who is ready to buy and gives you the ability to help your customer to recognize when a trigger has happened so working with triggers to improve your marketing basically there's four steps here one you you want to identify the different buyer personas that buy your product now we spoke about this in a, an earlier episode i'm going to put in the show notes on how you can identify your buyer persona or your customer persona Two, you're going to identify the trigger or triggers that typically get them into serious buying mode. What is it uh, that that gets your ideal buying persona or client persona into that buying mode? And three, you want to create messaging and content for each of the personas because you might have multiple personas for your business or brand. So you want you want to create that messaging and the content for each persona and each trigger combination. So you're going to look to see if you can create a trigger event or help them recognize one that has occurred. So I recently uh did a, a soft launch in one of my businesses where I um I created I created something very unique actually. It's it's a subscription holiday model where I get people to prepay their holidays and give them discounts and it all happens on Patreon. Uh so the need for affordable local accommodation in South Africa is there. And I've been doing it for almost a decade now where I've been providing local South Africans with quality affordable local accommodation. So I took the Patreon model, the subscription model, and I pushed it out through my fans. I've got over 15,000 fans or so, and uh people came. I didn't think it would work in South Africa. South Africa is so conservative and specifically in my city, super conservative especially with online spending, but I got people. And uh a lot of people even after launch, a lot of people came in and uh, it, it completely surprised me. So um I understood where these people were in the buy cycle. I teased them a lot. I told them that this was coming but i only opened the cart for a specific period so i knew that they were trigger ready they kept on asking me do we need a credit card do we need a debit card what do i need you know all those questions were there and all of those told me you know what at which level in the cycle they were in and that i understood what the trigger was and i was able to match up um the various personas with my trigger so you need to start building trigger specific messaging and content and now understanding this trigger helps us to create messaging for the persona like i gave you with the patreon example so on the f- front page of the website you want to know um those those keywords for your various personas for example uh, below your standard uh, video introduction you could place messaging for each persona in this case it might read business owner looking to get mobile application built in a fraction of the usual time this could lead to a landing page that uh, contains content specifically tailored for that use case so the content should be designed to help move that persona persona <laughs> through the buying cycle so you want to look to see if you can create the trigger or to help a customer realize a trigger has happened and if you are nurturing a bunch of leads that came to your website early in the buying cycle your goal with lead nurturing is usually to wait until some external event occurs that triggers them into activating that buying mode however the more you understand about these triggers the higher chance that you can actually help create the trigger so you control everything you don't really have to wait for that external event to happen and i did it with the patreon example i created the trigger I knew what the lead was there and I gave the time frame to say right it's happening now you fomo you know f- people people are acting on fomo fear of missing out so what happens in the case of you encounter uh, a customer that is late in the buying cycle now I, that happened with me with my patreon example 
after the cart was closed, a lot of people were like, oh, how can we get into this? It was such a good price. I missed it. I'm like, guys, I'm sorry. I had a personal Facebook group. I it went out on messenger marketing. It I ran ads to it. You missed out. You missed out. We're going to open again on Good Friday, but the prices are going to be hiked up. And uh, if there's a space, if somebody leaves, you can take their space, but nobody's going to leave my, my, my elite team. Nobody's going to leave. They just, they just got on. So what did I do in these cases? I basically said, you got to wait for the next round. I'm sorry. I'm just too loyal to the people that were loyal to me the first time around. So if you're in the similar kind of situation where you encounter that late buyer in the in the buying cycle, they have already shaped the feature list around some other vendor products and you are now being forced to react. So if you're selling a simple product where the features and the price can easily be assessed and be superior, it it's not too much of, of a big deal. You can accommodate. But if you're selling something more sophisticated where the customer needs to understand how unique your features are, I can change the business and give them greater uh, ROI, you're likely to be at a disadvantage to the company that helped them shape the buyer's picture of what they needed. So in more complex sales cycles, the ideal situation is to make sure that you get to know your customers earlier in the process and become the, the player that helps shape and define the shopping list. So that means finding customers early in the buying cycle and building a relationship with them over time. So that's my two cents on the buying cycle. Um, so those two concepts are just really important to online marketers, marketers. That's the customer buying cycle and the triggers. So know your customer buying cycle. It, it could be more sophisticated than what we spoke about, but take full advantage of the information that that I've given you. Try and figure out where most of your top funnel website visitors and leads, where are they in your buying cycle? Make sure that you have appropriate paths for them to follow, to answer their questions and move them forward in the cycle. Recognize that there is a portion of them that won't be ready to buy when they first encounter you. Instead, capture their email addresses and develop a rich lead nurturing system to help move them through the buying cycle. Then develop content to support their persona and stage in the buying cycle. Understand the different buying personas and what triggers them to make a purchase and look to see if you can help create a trigger event that moves them into the buying cycle. Alternatively, create messaging that helps them recognize when an event has occurred. So I hope this has given you insight. Um, I'd love to talk more about the buying cycles uh, a lot more. Maybe we can dedicate one episode to buying cycles and another to triggers because um, I'm sure triggers is something that you are looking for. So this is Yolanda signing off on this week's episode of the Digital Marketing Masters Podcast. And I'll chat to you next week.